Hello so guys, welcome back to the Raycom TV studio. Today, we're going to be taking a little look through the Accent Digital ecosystem and its operation, things like a Zigbee mesh network with a laptop. I haven't let Jack leave yet. You might have seen him <laughs> from the previous video. He's still here. Jack, thanks for staying around. It's my pleasure. We Apparently are, there's lunch soon, so I'm very excited about soon. that. We'll be getting lunch, I promise. <laughs> but we're going to be taking a look, as we said, Accident Digital, the wider ecosystem, and yep. actually how it works in operation, if you were, on location. Nice rack, Jack. Thank Looking you. Pretty good. Um, yeah, we've got some new stuff now uh, that's joined us for this. So we already know, you know what this is. This is our uh, ADX 5D receiver. We've got all the transmitters here. Um, and obviously now we have the racked version of Axiom. So this stuff was around before our ADX 5D. And what I think we should focus on in this video is Showlink in, in a bit more detail. Because sure. there's two ways that you can use Showlink with ADX 5D. Mm -hmm. The first is, just to remind ourselves, Showlink is the ability to remote control our transmitter. So the first way that you can use that is in direct mode. And in direct mode, this is unique to ADX 5D. Um, any Showlink enabled transmitter, which would be a transmitter with an X, uh, has a link to this little antenna here. And you can change things like the RF power, the mm. frequency. One thing that people do get a bit confused about, you can't change the gain remotely, but that's because Axiom Digital actually just has one system gain. Mm. The way that all of these transmitters work is we actually have a stereo analog to digital converter. One's a low gain and one's a high gain. And all the receivers take the information from both of those sides. And it gives us a really high dynamic range. It's exactly the same as how HDR works in photography, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the gain control on the receiver here is the gain control for the transmitter. There's not really a remote relationship there. So even if you've just got the non-Showlink enabled versions, you can still make gain adjustments from the receiver quite happily. But yeah, in direct mode, we can change the frequency, we can change the power, and that's absolutely fine. I think for 85% of the use case, that's gonna be suitable. But what I want to do is have a little look at why we would take it a step further and use the Showlink networked mode. And to do that, we need to add a couple of extra things in. Uh, the first is this here, which is essentially a Wi-Fi access point. This is called the AD610. Um, now you can power this hard power with a power supply or it will take power over Ethernet as well, mm -hmm. which is what it's doing here. It's plugged into the back of one of our Axiom Digital receivers that can provide PoE. And once I've got this in, I can start using wireless workbench, which is what I've got on the machine here. So if we have a little look at this screen now, I can see all of the devices that are in this rack uh, because I've got wireless workbench attached to it in the background. And you know, as, as just a prime example of why that might be useful, if I hit flash all devices, um, all of these devices are going to identify, including the ADX 5D because it's within the network, yeah. and any Showlink enabled transmitter as well will flash at the same time. So we should have some on air over there. If I just click flash again, we should hopefully see some of those light up too. And they're right, yep, flashing on the top. Now really usefully, you can do that back in the other direction as well. So I can actually flash a channel from any of these transmitters. Mm -hmm. So if I have got a really big complex show and I just want to identify you know, what's paired up to what, you can do that really simply, sure. which is cool. And I can do the same thing in the other direction. So I can flash an individual RF channel from the receiver, so if I've got a you know, pile of ADX1Ms in front of me and I just want to find one of them, I can do that, it's really helpful. Always a perk when you've got an ecosystem, it's just easy. 100%. Making it as easy as possible and that's what it's designed to do. Absolutely, and when you're using it in this way, because everything lives in Wireless Workbench, I have all of the other functionality that Wireless Workbench gives me, so I can name these channels. Uh, I can assign them to inclusion groups for RF coordinations and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah. I can create scans as well. If we have a little look at this frequency coordination page, I've done a scan of our location here to make our coordination. Um, and that just boots directly into Workbench. I can do remote scans as well if I've got in-ears on site. I can take an in-ear pack out and do mm. a scan and load that into Wireless Workbench. So yeah, this is really the software that kind of links the whole thing together and makes it work, which is really cool. Yeah. It's free software as well. 100% free. Excellent. It does three things for us. Mm -hmm. It's an inventory management tool first and foremost, as we said, to name our devices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it also operates as an absolutely amazing frequency coordination tool. And it will also let you create coordinations with third-party gear as well. You can't control that gear, but we have profiles for 
you know, RF systems from other manufacturers. So if you mm -hmm. are working on site with a number of different systems, it will give you frequencies for those that you can then manually go and tune. Sure. And then thirdly, it operates as a monitor. So the theory goes, you start by prepping your inventory, you then do your frequency coordination, and then you spend mm -hmm. the rest of your time in this monitor window that we're looking at now. And as we can see here, this is giving me the audio levels coming in, the battery information, it's giving me the show link um, uh, level. So how good that Zigbee connection is. I'm getting the RSSI indication on both antennas on this yellow um, marker here. I can then see if any antennas have had a dropout. That's what these two are doing. They're essentially measuring the, you know, the pilot tone of the antennas. Mm -hmm. So if something goes wrong, I can see it. And it's also showing me the link quality. Now, actually, the link quality is a really important thing to talk about with an Axiom Digital, because obviously we have our RSSI indicators here, as you would expect with any analog system. Yeah. But in a digital system, the level of that information coming in isn't as important as the quality. And that's what these five dots are showing us. This okay. is essentially a measure of the signal to noise ratio on that carrier. Because yeah. on this, three of these you know, orange orbs could be just RF noise. This could be you know, a, a digital base station somewhere or it could be another transmitter. And I wouldn't know because it's not going to tell me what it is. Mm -hmm. So having that indicator is really useful. And I've seen it work both ways. I've seen it where I've got really low levels of RF coming in, but actually the signal to noise on that carrier is really good. And I've got five bars of quality, which means everything's okay. I've also seen it where that is maxed out, but the quality is down at two. And in that scenario, it means that there's something else sharing that carrier that you need to go and identify sure. and sort out, which is really handy. Sure, and that's what this whole system's about. It's easy identification, A, of your own equipment, your own yep. ecosystem, Absolutely. and catching potential issues before they arise. So if you are, say, a sound engineer who's you know, getting more and more sure equipment, Wireless Workbench offers us a fantastic little stepping stone into that ecosystem mm -hmm. to manage it for us. But to the point you just made, catching issues before they arise, 100%, but what if you haven't caught the issue and now you're in the middle of it and you just want to fix it? You're going to show me, aren't you? I am. So at that point, I want to introduce this rack at the top here, which is our AXT600 Spectrum Manager. So this is basically a wireless microphone receiver with eight receiver blocks built into it, but it is not converting that you know, RF into audio. This is a tool to measure the RF spectrum to be able to perform scans in real time and see what's going on. And in a setup like this with an AD610, which is remote controlling the whole infrastructure, what I can do is program backup frequencies, which is super, super useful. So this was the real thing with Axiom Analog that made it take off, is the ability to have a primary frequency coordination with a number of backups saved. And I hope you can see on this screen here, that's what we've got. So I've got eight frequencies in use, which are the eight receivers here. Uh, and, and obviously including the 885D as well. Mm -hmm. And I've got four backups ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is try and create some interference and show you how this works. So we're gonna do it via the ADX5D. So this ADX1M, this micro body pack here, is currently paired up to channel one of the ADX5D. And I'm now going to create a bit of interference on that channel using this ADX1 body pack. So I'm going to do that by basically tuning straight onto its frequency. So mm. this scenario is, I don't know, you're on site, you've done your coordination, somebody else has turned up, another sound engineer. The one that I see most of all in festival situations, more than anything else, and award shows actually, like the Brits, for example, mm -hmm. is, you know, a broadcaster turns up with a, a, an ENG pack of some kind that is not in your frequency coordination and they don't really know what they're doing they just turn it on and they're using the frequency they've always used and that can absolutely break your complex coordination right mm -hmm. so that's what we're going to simulate here somebody turning on a piece of RF that is not regulated so let me just see what frequency this is on for a start 620425 uh, so I'm going to just do that here go to radio frequency 620425. And what I've done is set this up to automatically change. So when I press go, there we go, we can see that we lost our frequency and now we've got uh, our bars back up. I can see that it's changed to 621350, which is a backup that I programmed into the system. So it's a coordinated backup, which means that you know we're, we're still within our RF coordination as we wanted it to. But the show's going on. Mm -hmm. It's just served that frequency out quite happily. And then what the system will do is take that backup that um, I had deployed and then it's actually going to isolate it. It's going to quarantine it in its mm -hmm. brain. And we can see what that looks like in here. So 
If I just go into the AXT600 in Wireless Workbench, I can go into the Spectrum Manager here. Let's open that up. I can see the quality of the backups that I have planned. Now, all of these are actually backup and available to use now, but when it experiences some interference, the quality uh, indicator here on the left-hand side will turn red and then that backup won't be available to deploy again. So this is the real secret source of what the Spectrum Manager is doing. It's not just holding a backup pool, it's constantly measuring those backups to see if they're able to deploy. Because the worst thing is, if you're in that situation where you've got noise and you've had to change a channel, and then it deploys a backup that is also compromised, you don't want that. So the Spectrum Manager is there in the background, ensuring that the backups are good and ready to go. You can set this up to work in a couple of different ways. We saw it in its fully automatic mode there. We can also set it to warn us, and in that scenario, we have to physically tell it to deploy a backup, which is just okay. a case of pushing yeah, yeah. a button on here, or wireless workbench, or we can set it to do nothing. Sure. And that is kind of you know, useful sometimes if you're perhaps in prep phases, you've got lots of RF sparking up, you don't want to be losing channels or moving stuff about, you can just set the system to be fully passive and that's sure. it. Sure, you should ignore all the bad stuff going on. Absolutely, yeah, cool. 100%. So guys, that is an overview of the Axiom digital ecosystem actually in practice with a rack with other Shure products. Yep. Fantastic products. Jack, thank you so much for coming in. You are a fountain of knowledge when it comes oh, to this. Thank you. I've learned so much myself. Hopefully the guys watching at home, you'll find this either helpful with your own setups or if you're looking to get into that Shure ecosystem, it has provided a brilliant sort of bounce pad for you if you like. Thank you for watching. If you would, hit that big subscribe button down the bottom so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Again, a massive thank you to Jack and also Pepe, who's off camera from Shaw, for coming in today. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Speak to you soon.